When asked for advice, I usually tell new game developers to complete as many small projects as they can. Easier said than done, but you can learn a lot of things from finishing a project that you wouldn't necessarily learn from creating a bunch of throwaway prototypes, something that many game devs spend a lot of time doing, myself included. Things like, how do you structure your project so it can scale? And what are the steps for creating a build that you can actually distribute? Or as we'll see in this video, what techniques can you use to deal with a project that has a lot of folders? But before we get into that, my name is Charles and this is Infallible Code, a channel designed to help you become a better game developer. This video is part of a monthly series where I share the Unity assets that I use to boost my productivity because making a game is hard enough without having to fumble around in my editor. This month, we're taking a look at an asset that'll help you deal with the pain points of working with an ever-growing project. Rainbow Folders 2 is a lightweight utility with a very useful function. It allows you to apply a color and or icon to any folder in your project. And that's it. Incredibly simple, but as we'll see in a moment, there's a little more to it than that. Let's switch on over to Unity and see it in action. First, let's go ahead and import Rainbow Folders 2 into our example project. Next, let's take a look at the project window where we can see it's already made a few noticeable changes right out of the box. We've got row shading, a project tree indicator, and a bunch of default icons, all of which, by the way, are completely configurable. Just open up the project settings window and navigate to the rainbow folders section. The enhancement section at the bottom gives us control over the project tree and row shading features. And the general section at the top lets us configure where rainbow folders lives in our project structure, an option that every Unity asset should have, and change the modifier key that we'll use to bring up the folder styling option menu. We'll just leave it set to the Alt key. Focusing back on the project window, we can see that all of these icons actually make sense for the folders that they're applied to. For instance, the prefab folder uses Unity's default prefab icon. That's because Rainbow Folders 2 uses a simple rule system to decide how each folder should be styled. The styling we see here is based on pre-configured rules that are based on a simple naming convention. My font folder breaks this convention because it's named in the singular tense, so it doesn't get any sort of styling. But if I change it to the plural tense, we can see that the convention-based styling is applied. Of course, this only works for the folder names that are most commonly used in Unity, which is why the Models folder still doesn't have any styling. But that's okay, because we can apply our own styling rule by holding down the modifier key and clicking on any folder to bring up the rule menu. Let's walk through all of the options. The first option allows us to define the scope of our custom rule. Setting it to path will apply this rule to a single folder at this exact location. And setting it to name will apply this rule to any folder called models. Now, sometimes a folder will fall under the scope of multiple rules, so we can set the priority to determine which rule should be considered the most important. Next, onto the fun part. We can begin applying icons and colors. The icon option changes the actual folder graphic. We can choose a color for the entire folder, change the folder's transparency, add a color tag, or select an icon based on type or even platform. Or if you don't find what you're looking for, you can go ahead and create your own custom texture. In this case, I'm going to use the Meshes icon for our Models folder. The Background option changes the color behind the folder text in both the list and icon views, and is also customizable. I'll go ahead and choose green to match the color of my icon. Finally, we can set either one of these options to be recursive, which means it'll be applied to all of the subfolders that live within the folder that matches this rule's scope. Now we can hit Apply, and not bad. So that was one way to edit our folder styling rules. But if we use the modifier key to bring up the rule menu again, we can see that there's a gear icon in the bottom left-hand corner that opens up an asset that contains all of the rules for a given project. Sure enough, we see the pre-configured rules that are based on convention. And if we navigate to the end of the list, we can see that new rule that we just created for the models folder. This is a great feature because it allows us to export the rule set and use it in another project. And that just about covers it. Rainbow Folders 2 is a simple yet robust Unity asset that has great features, great documentation, and great support to boot. If you're considering purchasing it, please also consider using my affiliate link that you can find in the description of this video. It really helps support the channel. Well, that's it for this month's productivity asset. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. A special thanks to my top supporters, Berkowitz 3D, Darkrush Photography, Joe Tizul, R-Star, Thomas, Trond, 
Yusuf Ali Castle, Yakub Al Safari, and Iron Alex. Thanks, guys. <laughs>